Today we're going to talk about editing. Uh, ready? Okay. Five, six, and. It boils down to this. Editing is all about controlling information. And there are many styles and techniques an editor can use to present a story to an audience. One of those techniques is creating what I refer to as the oh f moment. We'll get into that. Now let's take a look at a few examples that explore editing as a storytelling tool. I believe they all demonstrate why you cut and how an edit can be motivated by story. Let's get started. It's important for an editor to be very aware of what they're showing to an audience because audiences are constantly scanning every frame of film looking for as much information as possible. Sometimes you don't want the audience to see something until just the right moment. Take Alien for example. You can hold on long, unbroken takes to build out suspense. This film has some of the most tense moments in cinema because of its restraint on when to show the creature and when to cut. Or shall I say, when not to cut. In the previous scene, the alien was lurking right around the corner. As a result of that, the audience is on the edge of their seat, desperately looking in every nook and cranny, waiting for the alien to pop out while Ripley is walking down the corridor. Is it over there? Is it over there? Is it over there? Just to clarify, this shot goes on for a minute and we don't see the alien. So anyways, at the hands of some of the best filmmakers, you'll find they often hold on long, unbroken wide shots. Holding on wides means that the audience now becomes the editor. By doing this, the audience can be much more engaged with the film. They're looking at whoever or whatever they want. Musicals are a fantastic example of holding on wides, letting the audience become the editor. Take a look at West Side Story. <laughs> Compare this to step up four. Here's what it's like to be shown what to look at. So anyways, my point is when you hold on a wide, it saves your greatest storytelling shot for a moment to be much more impactful. And that shot is the close-up. Unlike wides that give audiences tons of information, a close-up gives the audience one specific piece of information to focus on. When used effectively, it can be the best technique to controlling the story. In Dr. Strangelove, we hold on this wide for over three minutes until we cut to a close-up of General Ripper. I'm the only person who knows the three-letter code group. Then I must insist, sir, that you give them to me. Now this is an oh f kind of moment. Do I take it, sir, that you are threatening a bother officer with a gun? It's because these cuts are motivated by story and shift the scene in a new direction. And this is used all the time. Jump forward 30 years and you'll see a similar thing here in Reservoir Dogs. We hold on the wide of Mr. Blonde torturing this cop until we reveal the razor blade in a close-up. Another oh f kind of moment. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Cut close-up, furthering the story. You ever listen to Kay Billy's Super Sounds of the 70s? Now you don't always have to hold on wides. Conversely, you may find that many filmmakers hold on close-up shots. My personal favorite is the close-up introduction to the Sundance Kid. Again, George Roy Hill and his editors, John C. Howard and Richard C. Meyer, carefully controlling who and what the audience sees. Sundance is introduced over a game of blackjack. We, the audience, don't see the bets, we don't see the cards, and we especially don't see the man losing to him. This guy assumes Sundance is cheating and challenges him to a duel. Cut. We see a close-up of the gun. Cut. Now I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. We hold on this close-up until Butch Cassidy comes in and takes it over. These are our two main characters, and we learn everything we need to know about them right here. And when the next cut comes, it's again motivated by story. Butch says, I can't help you, Sundance. Cut. Huh? Cut. That's right. Cut. Oh, f***. Cut wide. <laughs> see how that works? Bang, 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 bang. I didn't know you were the Sundance kid when I said you were cheating. Those cuts come in rapid succession at work because the tension had already been drawn out. Now the rest of the scene plays out mainly in a wide, contrasting the amount of time we'd spent in the close-up. And yet the tension remains the same. It's a fantastic scene, it's very well balanced, and we'll come back to that. Well, Chief, what have you got on? Polly, if this new filing system is gonna work... If you haven't noticed by now, a lot of what I'm saying crosses over into direction, and you can't talk about editing without talking about directing or cinematography. Now let's take a look at Jaws. Spielberg is very efficient with how he constructs each scene, and it shows in the editing. Editor Verna Fields won an Oscar for this film, by the way. And in this scene, there's only one cut. It's a close-up insert shot of the typewriter. 
we see the words shark attack, telling the story visually. Then the shot continues on and that's it. There's no reason to cut to the secretary in the background, why would you? It wouldn't move the story forward in any way. So try and save your cuts, or in other words, have a reason to cut. I recommend Jaws to everyone to just watch and study over and over. Let's look at Hitchcock. The shower scene in Psycho could be one of the most effective forms of editing committed to film. Each cut is quite literally synced to each stab. And because the sequence is shot entirely in close-ups, the audience is filling in what they don't see with their own imagination. Where was I? Oh yes. He uses different editing techniques for each kill. Notice here in the high wide angle at the top of the stairs, cut to the extreme close-up of Arbogast getting stabbed. Wide into close, cutting on action, creating shock. Very effective. But what about an action scene? You'll find that these same editing techniques apply. Intercutting close-ups with wides, and it's full of oh f type of moments. Cut wide to establish geography. Cut close up to the train car unbuckle, furthering the story. And now it's heading directly at Harrison Ford. Cut back. Go f go f go f Cut. No, no, no. Cut back. Cut close up. Cut wide. Now here's an editing buffet, intercutting rapidly. Mass destruction achieved by placing multiple cameras designed to get specific angles. Oh. Oh. Oh, f That's a great sequence. On a side note, in case you're wondering, they actually derailed a train for this. There's only one miniature shot. This one. So as you can see, filmmaking is full of starts and stops, actions and cuts. A great film largely comes down to how the story is assembled. All in all, find out what the point is, know what story you're trying to tell, and take control of the information you're giving to the audience. Feel free to experiment, try different things, different takes, whatever. Film is an art, editing is an art. Just remember to keep in mind the story, the audience, and the story. Do that and you'll know when to cut. Now I'd ask you guys to stick around, but... Hey kid, how good are you? Oh, f***. Okay, I hope this helps. The TIE Fighter is an elephant and a car on a wet street, I believe, which gives it that...